Hey, what's up guys? BJ Dell back with an all new weekly art challenge review video. Last week's word was hippo, so let's see what you guys came up with. All right guys, let's go ahead and jump into today's video all about the word hippo from last week's art challenge. And the first one up today is Peter and Peter wrote in the Facebook group, hi all, been watching for some weeks now with all of your posts and very inspiring, must say. Uh, finally had the time to do one of these weekly challenges myself. So here's my take on a loving hippo. And I really like Peter's design on this. I like how the hippo centered. You got the heart kind of framing it behind there. And then the solid line here uh, kind of makes for an interesting composition and kind of frames everything in really nicely. Uh, the thing that really stands out with this design, if you guys look at just the overall shape of the hippo, instead of going on uh, just a solid front view, you know, you've got this very kind of dynamic pose that the hippo's taking so uh, when you you know start to do more character designs and stuff like that uh, definitely kind of going and changing the feel the pose and making it as interesting as possible is really key to making uh, you know a compelling design I think Peter did a great job of that you can just kind of see how this kind of twists and turns here and you've got this really strong kind of fluid line coming up behind here to give it a lot of motion and dynamics and I think it's really well done coloring and uh, shadows are spot on too and I just love the overall design so thanks so much for joining in on these Peter uh, like seeing your work this week Next up is Skylar, and Skylar did the Hipster Hippo, and this one is really great. You got all the key elements, of course, for the Hipster. We've got the hat, you know, the haircut, the mustache, the suspenders, and the tie, and just, uh, you know, overall, I think it works really well. Uh, of course, you know, it's pretty basic as far as design goes with, you know, using the solid circles here. And you can see how this one is a lot more just uh, kind of static than the dynamic kind of motion that Peter got out of this. But I still think this one works on Skylar's and I like the overall design. Just has something that kind of pops and stands out. Uh, I definitely like the, the choice of the wallpaper back here too. I think that works really well. And even though these are really kind of, like I said, the basic lines straight up, straight down, um, I think this, this works to get the point across. And I just, I really like it. I like the eyes too. Those are really well done. They're kind of small and beady, but the colors are nice and it makes it pop. And I think it's an overall well done design and of course the uh you know tying in the the hipster to the hippo is is a wise choice and i think a couple people did that this week but uh, this one kind of scored all the points as far as getting all the the key elements of the hipster in there so great job skylar thanks for showing next up is steve and i've said before in the videos you know i i don't necessarily pick the best ones every week i don't pick the worst ones i just pick something that stands out uh to me that i can talk about and try not to pick you know the same people every week and i know I featured Steve's last week in the Urban Legend Challenge with the, the bunny rabbit. Uh, but with this one, I had to pick this one this week just because it stood out so much and it was just super, super fantastic. Um, just everything about this just is speaks professionalism and just awesomeness. So just going first off just the colors themselves you got the the color choices here are just super warm and inviting and everything ties in it's super bright and welcoming and i think the colors are just spot on of course the the character design itself is just fantastic i talked about steve's lines last week and you know how how well he's able to do um you know line weight and make the design interesting through correct line weight and once again same thing here just done really really well and i love you know all these extra folds here and the way that the arm folds into to this fold and crease here i think that is just fantastic uh the the lighting is superb you've got the the kind of sun rays here i don't know if those are showing up it's really subtle really subdued but hits nicely off of you know the uh front part of the head coming down to the snout here and then trails back into the shadows which is just really well done and of course with the lines themselves you know not going for the the hard black and actually tying it in with the the colors based on the the hippo itself is really well done and then of course the background here and i think steve uh put that in the comments the depth of field is amazing on that and i think he said that he used three different layers and you know adjusted the blur more so as it went back into the distance to give it that correct depth of field so you know these background images here made up of three separate layers and just blurred a little bit more going back so just a really well done and believable depth of field to you so just a fantastic job steve love seeing your stuff and can't wait to see more uh, next up we have don and don has the hippo 
in the ocean or a lake or what have you, but in the water in his little duck flotation uh, device and sipping on the martini, which is a, an awesome touch. And I think it's really well done. Uh, I like the, the overall look of the hippo. I think character design, once again, is a really strong one on this one. And, you know, the duck and the expression here is just super awesome. Uh, but the, the reason why I picked this one is because I think this is the first time that it's happened in the group. Uh, Don said that he actually reached out to Steve, whose uh, picture was the one that we just did, and asked if he minded taking the image and coloring it in his style in order for me to learn. Uh, so this is Don's version, and then he sent it over to Steve, and this is Steve's version. So like I said, I think the first time ever a, uh, a collab on the channel. So uh, fantastic job reaching out, guys. Really super cool to, to see the teamwork and camaraderie going on with that. Uh, you know, I love seeing just the overall, you know, joy everybody has for artwork and the support that everybody shows in the group and you know just seeing two people come together like this it, it just warms my heart and it's awesome to see so uh great job working together guys so we'll pull back here so we can kind of see both of these and i'm not sure how well some of this is showing up it looks a little bright on the screen there we go you can see it a little bit better uh, but you can see one of the key points i really like about what steve did here is you've got the reflection here in the water which makes it a little bit more believable. I know Don said he, he thought his looked a little flat, and I think that's one of the key things, especially with the water, uh, you know, not having a reflection. So I think that goes a long way. And then also you see Steve here kind of knocked out that horizon line uh, to where Don had that drawn in. And I think that looks a little bit more natural for, you know, being a body of water, and it just kind of flows naturally from the the sky here into the water without having that hard black line for the horizon. I think that works out well. And I think the other thing that stands out too is just uh, kind of the warmth once again, uh, like I mentioned in Steve's previous one, the, the warmth of this one kind of pops a little bit more, just like the duck itself. You kind of have this warmer yellowish orange color that's used and same thing with the the shadows here you know these are the the orange shadows rather than the uh using the black and dropping the opacity and i think that that works too so but a fantastic job don love yours but then also steve love the the little additions here that, that you made and like i said just really cool seeing two people work together in the group and hope to see more of that in the future so thanks for sharing that guys uh, next up is Gabo. I think that's how you pronounce it, Gabo. And I think this is the first time uh, that Gabo's been on the channel and said, uh, basically done with pastel pencils. So we've got a traditional piece. And like I've said in the videos before, if you guys, you know, are following along with these review videos, if you don't have, you know, digital, uh, if you don't have an iPad or a computer with a tablet, you know, traditional is more than fine to submit to. It's all about art, all about creating. And I think this one is just fantastic. I love seeing different mediums and these uh, pastel pencils really shine on this one. So uh, the overall shape of the hippo and the action that's taking doing this, uh, you know, open mouth pose. I think if you've ever been to the zoo before or have watched, you know, any type of animal planet stuff on TV, you've seen this before and you've got the water dripping off as the, the hippo comes up with the mouth open. And this one is just really good. A lot of action. Um, the, the way that the water comes down here, it kind of adds even more motion to the overall design. So I think that works really well. And I love how, you know, once you lay down a, a certain color, being able to go back in with this white on top is just fantastic. Uh, the colors here too in the, the hippo's face, I love kind of the flow that these colors have. And it really makes it kind of, you know, a realistic uh, approach to, to coloring and shading uh, from real world, uh, you know, colors with the way that these darker kind of brighter browns are in here and it kind of builds up the overall shape of the face. And then of course, coming back down here to this darker shadowed area, but I love this touch of blue up here with the kind of, um, you know, tying it into the, the reflection of the water and the, the highlights and the, the overall just wet look is done really, really well. And then of course the shading here in the background, I think is fantastic. It frames everything really nice and I like to just the overall, you know, framing here that you took to, uh, kind of keep it in the inside edges of the paper here. I think that is really cool. Uh, that was always something I love to do when I was doing, um, you know, watercolors and the like was taping off the edges painting on top and then pulling that tape off 
just to have that really kind of perfect line that framed everything is a lot of fun and uh, it's really kind of one of those rewarding experiences once you're done and, and gently pulling off that tape and seeing how everything is just framed so nice so fantastic job Gabo thanks for submitting that this week uh, next up is David and David's got a cute little cartoon hippo and the thing that stands out with this uh, I love I like the design once again it's very basic with the the circle shapes but I think it works and the thing that really stands out here is you've got a really nice texture build up for the the skin and I like the colors the best just because it has a very kind of realistic fade from one color to the darker that hippos actually have and the way that you did it here on the body and then also on the the face here and the snout and then up by the eyes I think is really well done and it, it like I said it has that kind of realistic uh fade from one color to the next but still maintaining you know the overall cute cartoon look is really really nice and then of course with the the highlights here uh tying in with the overall colors it just gives it that really shiny I just climbed out of water just that wet look that hippos are always have and I think it's super well done so thanks so much for sharing that this week David and last but not least we have Julia and Julia said that uh, this is her first post here so first weekly submission love seeing all of your talent and creativity I've been working on getting into a regular drawing habit it's been a while since I painted and illustrated so I'm still experimenting with figuring out my style and refining my technical skills and of course that's one of the best ways uh, you know to, to build up your skills is practicing drawing every day and then also you know finding your own style is key too and that takes time it takes practice um, it's going to take probably in most cases years before you get to a, a point where you say this is my style and you find something that you're comfortable with so keep at it and develop that style and i think you're definitely on your way i love this hippo submission the the overall textures used i think are really nice here you've got these kind of rough almost charcoal pencil type uh lines here and then the way that everything fades up here in with the colors and like i said the buildup of the textures is really nice uh drawing something from head on like this is super difficult when you've got you know a body behind and then the head and everything's the same color uh too often you know the the head's gonna blend in with everything and I think you did a, a really fantastic job of kind of using the lighter highlights here on the edges to make that head kind of pop and stand out from the rest of the body so that's really well done in the way that this is lighter here versus the darker parts here really helped to make that stand out without actually having the lines drawn in so really good job there I also like the technique here you used in the center and just kind of building up that almost um, just structure to the face and to the skull and to the head uh, the colors here and the way that you blended everything really kind of builds up the the framework for uh, the head and gives it a lot of three-dimensional shape which I think is really good and then of course the background too I like that everything here is super in focus and this is kind of blurry back here it gives it a little bit more of a depth of field and um, just makes an overall really nice design it's not too busy and it puts the main focus on the hippo which is the the kind of center of attention so that is it for the submissions this week for hippo all right guys that's it for today's video as always thank you for watching and thanks to everyone that participated this week like i said before the group keeps growing getting bigger and there's more and more submissions every week and you guys blow me away week in and week out so thanks so much i appreciate each and every one of you if you like today's video too make sure you give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications so you can get alerted when i post new videos and speaking of new videos and the new challenge word of the week there's not one that's right there's not a new challenge word this week and honestly there's not going to be a new challenge word of the week for the entire month of october and i'm sure some of you are probably kind of confused and flipping out right now while there's others that kind of know what this is leading into so the entire month of october want to do the official inktober prompts in the group if you guys are not familiar with inktober i've got my trusty phone out and let's read directly from the inktober site to tell you exactly what it is so uh, Inktober is a month-long art challenge created by artist Jake Parker that is focused on improving skills and developing positive drawing habits. Every day of uh, the month of October, anyone participating in the Inktober challenge creates an ink drawing and posts it online. Remember to use the hashtags Inktober and Inktober2019 if you want your art to be seen by everyone. So basically, there's a list put together, uh, one drawing prompt per day, 
31 days for the entire month of October. And that's what we're going to be using going forward for the month of October. This has become like this worldwide phenomenon in the art community. And I, I think our community is big enough now that we need to get everybody on board and join in on this. I know initially when they first started this, there was kind of some discussion if it had to be traditional and does digital count and there's been kind of arguments in the community but based on once again the official inktober site can i work digitally from the facts section yes initially the challenge of inktober was focused on traditional inking although learning how to ink digitally is a separate skill from traditional inking it is no less valid if you want to improve your digital inking skills then doing inktober digitally is a great way to challenge yourself just be cool to those who want to use traditional inks and traditional inkers. Be cool to those who are trying to improve with their digital inking. So there you have it from the official site. The only rule for this, if you are doing it either traditional or digital, is the idea is behind it is the inking process. So do a white background, then inks. That's it. No colors. Don't color it in. No shading. No anything. Just inks. Uh, you don't necessarily have to use black ink if you want to ink something in red or blue. Just basically the rules are keeping it to a one color minimum with a white background is kind of the, the flow that the, the entire contest works off of. So I'll post a link down in the description to the official Inktober list. Also in the group, I'll be posting the official list too. And uh, if you can participate every day, that's the way to do it. It's, it's The whole idea is to kind of build up daily drawing habits, to build up your skills over a full month period and you've got 31 days to do it so if you do it every single day you should have 31 submissions for the group and I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with if you don't have time to do it every day uh, you know and just want to do one a week that is super cool too but this gives you you know 31 different things to choose from so post them in the group uh, if you are posting on Instagram or Twitter tag me in them as well so I will see them if you don't have Facebook and we'll go from there uh, like I said, no videos either for October because I want to do a mega Inktober review video. So the first week in November, that Wednesday, I'm basically going to do a huge video featuring 31 designs. I'm going to pick one from every single day. And uh, the thing with this too, I'm not going to pick any repeat people. So it's going to be 31 different artists, 31 different designs, and it's going to be super cool to see and want all you guys to join along. So hop on over to the group, check out the list. Get ready for Inktober and keep creating.